at so Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, uh, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God, which he had promised to fall by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ was born a Jew according to the flesh. They mustn't ever think that the Lord Jesus Christ began to exist when he was born of Mary. That is not the case. The Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal self-existent one. He's the God of the universe. You see, the Word of God says God created all things by Jesus Christ. So we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ is different to you and I. He's totally different in the sense that he was without sin. Why? Because he's God. God manifest in the flesh. One of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To think that God humbled himself so much to come down to this sin-cursed earth from the heavens above, from the eternal abode of God in heaven. And he came down in the person of Christ, who is clothed with humanity without sin, and he became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we need to understand that we are sinners in the sight of the Lord, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of that, there's a price to pay for sin. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23 says, and that's the bad news. But the good news is this. There is good news amongst the bad news. The good news is that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God had promised to fall by his prophet, this is in the gospel of God, and by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. I said he was born a Jew into this world. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Yes, you see, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, that is true. He was crucified for you and for me. But the third day, my friend, he rose again according to the Scripture. He's a living, loving Saviour, my friend. He desires to save your soul from a long lost eternity. You see, when we're born in this world, as I've said, we're born as sinners, and we need salvation, we need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So he's declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness by the resurrection from the dead. This proves the Father's absolute delight and satisfaction in the sacrifice of his dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the once for all sacrifice, as opposed to all the many sacrifices in the Old Testament time. There were many animals that were slain. There was much bloodshed. Many animals were killed, their blood was shed, and that was pointing toward the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. So we need to understand our sinful behavior, our sinfulness before the Lord. By our wicked works and in our minds, we're actually the enemies of God. Do you realize that? If you're not saved, if you're not a child of God, you're actually the enemy of God. And God does not want you to stay as his enemy. He wants you to become his friend. And the only way we can become his friend is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. Putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By whom? That's by the Lord Jesus Christ. We have received grace and apostleship for obedience, among, uh, obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, being the Christians here, 
to all that be in Rome, the loved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, although we're sinners in the sight of the Lord when we're born in this world, God wants to turn you into a saint. God wants to give you his righteousness. And the only way you can receive his righteousness is by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Christ. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ that we're preaching unto you. We as gospel preachers come here because we know that the only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we present him unto you tonight as the only one that can save your soul. You have a soul that needs to be saved. I wonder, are you saved? Are you a child of God? It says here, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we must stop here and just consider this. Are we all God's children? The fact is we're not all God's children. Until we've been born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now God wants to give you the new birth. God wants you to be born again into his family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That can be yours. Tonight, as you listen to this message, you need to get right with God. You need to have forgiveness for your sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. You just saw an ambulance flash past here, pretty quick. Fair rate of knots. It was going fairly quick. What happens if that was you and I in that ambulance and we were dead on arrival? That would be tragic, wouldn't it? But, you know, are you ready to meet God? We need to understand. We need to get right with God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, yet God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Have you come unto the knowledge of truth? the truth? Are you saved? Are you a child of God? Have you put your faith in Christ? We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you uh, ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you but was let hitherto, in other words, was hindered that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks, that is the Gentiles, and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek or Gentile. Did you hear that? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, that is the good news of Christ, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and he was seen of over 500 believers in one hit after he'd resurrected from the dead, the third day after being 
crucified upon the cross of Calvary for your sin and mine. Yes, it is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believeth. So you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to put your faith in Christ to be in heaven, to have forgiveness for your sins, and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So we need to understand we're without excuse before the Lord. Even as we look around and see creation, we can see that these things have been created. You're driving a car. Now, did, did that car just appear? Did a big bang happen? Did it just evolve or something? It's madness. Evolution is evolution. It's evil. Because it comes from a humanistic sort of a, sort of a mindset. It's thinking of man from man's point of view. But the point is this. God created all things, as I said earlier, by Jesus Christ. So we need to understand these things were created. It says here, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. That's even the, including us, even by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We are without excuse. When you look around and see the wonderful creation that God has made, his wonderful trees and animals and birds and all these creeping things and lovely bits of creation that we can see all around us. We are without excuse because we must understand there's a creator out there. And deep down, you and I know that there is a creator out there. You know, people aren't born atheists. They're trained to think about and think about these things and think that we have become from nothing or the Big Bang or whatever they like to say. No, there is a creator out there. And you and I are personally responsible before that Creator. And we must understand we are guilty of sin before the Lord. And we need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way we can receive forgiveness is through the Lord Jesus Christ. We are without excuse, even just by looking around at creation. And then also we have the conscience inside of us that tells us we're doing wrong things. These things are wrong. You know, there are certain people who they think that uh, certain things might not be wrong, but in reality, in the sight of God, they are. Now, there are, you know, certain uh, levels of consciousness, or, or obviously, but, uh, you know, we do have that, that conscience inside of us that tells us when we've done wrong, we feel guilty. You know what I mean? I'm sure you've done those things that are wrong in the sight of even your parents or whoever, or another person on earth, and you feel guilty about what you've done. That's the same thing when we think about God. We've done things against God. We've sinned against God. And because of those sins, we're heading down to hell, my friend. Those sins are taking us down to hell. And the ultimate thing that will take us down to hell, of course, is not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must understand there's one unforgivable sin, and that is unbelief. Not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for our eternal salvation. And so it says here, we're without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, uh, neither were thankful, but became vain in their, or empty or just useless in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Uh, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man 
and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. So here we see people uh, in idolatry or worshipping images. Images of, what do we have here? We have uh, an image like unto a corruptible man and the birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. So people are uh, creating idols, making idols in these different shapes of different things like people and animals and birds and bowing down and worship them. It's ridiculous. It's craziness to think that they can be God. There's only one true and living God we see him fully displayed in the person of Jesus Christ. And he's the one that I've come to uh, bring to you tonight. That you might come to Christ to be saved. That you might put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God. Remember, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. If you come to Christ tonight, if you come in repentance, acknowledging your sinful condition before the Lord, and then putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. That's the third ambulance we've seen tonight. As I said, what happens if that was you or I, and we were dead on arrival? Are you ready to meet God? The Bible says, as I said before, prepare to meet thy God. God wants you to be with him for all eternity in heaven, but you cannot be there apart from Jesus Christ. You've got to put your faith in Christ to be saved, my friend. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Look at uh, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. I just want to recap on some other preaching I've done just down the road. Uh, for the invisible things of him, that's from God, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now this indicates that we're without excuse before the Lord. When we look around and see the creation of God, the wonderful creation that God has made, and we see in the Word of God that God created all things by Jesus Christ, so we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ is actually the Creator, and He's also the Saviour. And He wants to be your Saviour tonight. And this is why I'm here tonight, because I'm concerned about your soul. Your soul that leaves your body at the moment of death, all of our souls leave our body, including mine, at the moment of death, where will you be one second after you die? It's either going to be heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, or it's going to be down in hell if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, he'll be your judge. It's either one or the other, salvation or damnation, heaven or hell. God is offering you tonight salvation. He's offering you eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ, his beloved son. So we're without excuse. When we look around and see creation around us, we're without excuse before God. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, but became, or sorry, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, we still have that in, in the world. You know, people are bowing down to created things. And the thing is, the Lord created all things. As I said, God created all things by Jesus Christ. So he's the creator of this whole universe. People think that the Lord Jesus Christ began to exist when he was born of Mary. Wrong. He's the eternal self-existent one. He was out there in eternity past. You see, God dwells outside of time. He's the eternal self-existent one. We see him fully displayed in the person of Jesus Christ. When we see the Lord Jesus Christ, we see what God, we see what the Father is like. He's not the Father, he's the Son. 
And the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is He your Saviour? You need to make Him yours personally. Without Him as our Saviour, He'll be our judge. And this is why I come tonight, because I'm concerned about your soul that leaves your body at the moment of death. Where will you be one second after you die? It's either going to be heaven through faith in Christ as your Saviour, or it'll be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says here, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonour their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. That's disgusting affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. nature. This is lesbianism here. Women going after more women. It's not natural, my friend. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. You know, God created a man and a woman to come together in marriage and then come together physically to produce children. And this can't be done when two men get together or two women get there together. It's an absolute abomination in the sight of the Lord. It's not the right thing to do. Sin in the sight of the Lord is not natural. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. This is your sodomy here. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate or to a rejected mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without uh, understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Romans chapter 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same thing. Now God is not saying, you know, people come to us as gospel preachers and say, Oh, you're judging me, it's wrong to judge. You're not supposed to judge people. But that's not what it really is all about. We are supposed to judge people. The point is this, hypocritical judgment is sin in the sight of the Lord. That's what's wrong. Judgment is okay. We judge all the time, every day. But the thing is, it says here, For, um, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doeth the same thing. So it's hypocritical judgment that is wrong in the sight of the Lord. That's what's wrong. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? See, it's the goodness of God that leads us unto repentance. And repentance, as I said to a young lady I was just talking to a minute ago, repentance is a change of mind. It's coming to God and agreeing with Him, yes, I realize that I am a sinner. And this is what we've got to come to. See, if we don't realize we're a sinner, we'll never ever be saved. We can never ever be in, in the family of God. We can never be born again. We can never be in heaven. The only way we can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ wants to be your Saviour tonight. And this is, the, this is the fourth ambulance I've seen tonight. It's amazing. I've never seen so, so many, I don't think. 
And what if that was you? As I keep on saying, what if that was you and you were dead on arrival? When you arrived at the hospital, you were dead. Have you prepared to meet God? Are you ready to die? Now it's very important we get ready to meet, go, uh, meet God. And we get ready to die because if we're not ready, we'll be in hell at the moment of death. God does not want that for you, my friend. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, Treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. You see that in other verses like be, and be sure your sin will find you out. For the wages of sin is death. And that's the bad news but the good news is this. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. To them who by patient continuance in world doing seek the glory and honour and immortality, eternal life. I wonder, are you seeking to have eternal life? To obtain eternal life? If you're seeking anywhere else apart from Christ, you're on the wrong track. You need to come to Christ to be saved. There's only salvation found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12 plainly says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must be saved, otherwise you remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because your sins have not been forgiven. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil to the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honour and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. It doesn't matter what country we come from, what colour our skin is, you know, where we've been born or whatever the case might be. We're all sinners in the sight of the Lord when we're born in this world. We are not God's children. Understand that, please. Understand that we are not God's children until we've been born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So it's absolutely essential we're born again by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Yes, by the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit. We need to receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit upon conversion. The moment we put our faith in Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live within the child of God. Those who have been born again by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live the Christian life. You and I can't live the Christian life in and of ourselves. We need the power of God inside of our body in the presence of the Holy Spirit to live the Christian life the way the Lord wants us to do. Yes, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the um, law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Did you hear that? In the day that God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You see, the word of God says this, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so the Lord Jesus Christ will either be your Saviour, and I hope he will, even tonight, as you listen to this message, you need to get right with God. You need to have forgiveness for your sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if not, 
He'll be your judge. Yes, behold, uh, thou art a, called a Jew, and rest us in the law, and make us thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approve us the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law, Thou therefore which teacheth another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast in the, of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily or truly profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, that is the Gentiles, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfil the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, uh, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, his praise is not of men, but of God. And so we need to understand, we have a soul that needs to be saved. And if our soul is not saved, we remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because our sins have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you uh, tonight that your sins can be forgiven, and the only way your sins can be forgiven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I wonder, have you believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? Are you a child of God? As you listen to this message tonight, are you ready to meet God? Have you been born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you come in repentance toward God? As I said, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood upon the cross in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Have you come to Christ? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you a child of God through faith in Christ? Again, we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There goes the fifth ambulance tonight that I've seen. What happens if that was you and I and we were dead on arrival, as I keep on saying? Are you ready to meet God? Are you prepared to meet God? You see, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yet God will have all men to be saved, as I've said, and to come under the knowledge of the truth. The truth is found in the Word of God, the Bible. It's also found in a person. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, not a way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have you come in repentance toward God, acknowledging your sinful condition before the Lord, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul? will be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.